the city, I broke all the notch. Got some more minutes, I keep me a knot. I created history. What's going on guys day is finally here we're done with the front bumper the rear bumper sides of the car uh everything's wet sanded ready to go uh, so later today we're going to be having uh the car go to the detail shop uh get the paint polished uh get it coated with ceramic coat so um we're going to breeze through the painting process of the front rear and maybe some of the sides um because I already showed you guys in the last video. Uh, this is how you deal with the aerosol cans, so check it out. Um, but if you wanna skip to the detailing part, you could skip to 11 minutes. Um, roughly around there is when it starts. And hopefully you guys can pick up some tips and tricks uh, from the professional. Uh, his name is Dan, he's been doing it for 10 years. You'll meet him later. Uh, but so yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like, subscribe below, and you know, stay tuned for a lot more coming. So this is the before the bumper, a uh, bunch of cracks on the lower end, um, huge road rashes and um, just nicks everywhere. Uh, this bottom part we actually stapled together because um, it was a, it was like flimsy and like bending back and forth, so we didn't we didn't want it to split right off. Um, but yeah, just a bunch of like pebbles, rocks, um, scrapes. I don't know what the previous owner was trying to do or what he's trying to drive over but lots lots and lots to do So when it comes to spraying uh, primer, base coat, quick car, I just want to reiterate that the spray can is not supposed to be horizontal. So if you rewind, you know, the, the bumper is flat or um, laying down and the can is parallel with it. You, you want the can to be vertical, so you should really prop up the, the bumper. Um, you'll see a lot of uh, spritz falling on the ground. Um, things like that like you don't want the can to sputter or else you get um, patches and run marks I don't want to to drive in a Rari if you're gonna tell me to go slow I don't want to think about the life that we could have had looking at the past through a snow globe but your little vintage and our breaths did it make up for the time wasted go slow when you hit the matrix I don't mind loco I don't want to almost get rich and turn back baby girl now nah, now nah, I'm over so close I don't wanna lay alone in the mansion The welfare is cold when the door closed Wanna know my openness statements Even though I've been waiting Baby girl, I'm impatient She's my mom, girl, the whiskey She gon' bust her right here cause it's risky She got a cold like the Vinci Again, same mistake as before Prop the bumper up That way the bumper is vertical Your spray can is vertical Um because you're not going to be picking up consistent um, paint in the spray can. Especially, you're already at a disadvantage because you're, you're using a spray can. So, as long as you keep it vertical, you're consistent with, um, you know, the liquid coming out. And you're not going to get a bunch of, you know, chunks of paint come out. all right that pretty much wraps it up for the front bumper now we just take out a few a few clips on the back and we're gonna work on the uh, rear bumper this one has I guess similar um, level of damage I'll show you guys right now nothing too crazy though we're just gonna work the same procedure we're gonna sand it uh, add bondo if we need to primer 
base coat, wet coat, oh, a base coat, clear coat, wet sand it, get it ready for detail. So in the middle it's got a few nicks, uh, like a scratch, some touch up paint, like black touch up was used. Um, it's kind of just an eyesore, I don't know, to me it bothers me. This side you got a few um, like scrapes, like side swipes, uh, I took off the paint. Um, probably has some leftover paint from whatever car you hit too. Um, but it just went straight down into the uh, plastic, so. Alright, so now we're going to begin the wet sanding. This is going to be in preparation for the detail job and getting the paint corrected and ceramic coated. Um, to get these new um, fresh paint areas um, ready and um, able to have a good finish, we're going to have to break down all the orange peel, so that's why we're wet sanding. It's going to be um, a few, I guess, layers and um, hours spent to make sure that we get enough orange peel down but not to completely remove the clear coat. So you want to be very generous with the clear coat. Uh, we're going to be doing like 2,000 maybe 1,500 if it's like some um, larger spots but 2,000 wet sanding should be um, the nice sweet spot for getting it ready. Fashions. With the stress now, we are gonna need some intercession Feel the pain arise, how could I lie? Night after night, by your side, all the while Keeping lies down inside, put my vows to the side Now your eyes close tight in the night, Valentine's Just another day, feeling out of place And I really hate me When I see your face, then I contemplate What if I erase me? Better that than facing the truth Someone better waiting for you Someone who is faithful to you Grab me by my face with your wedding band Up against my jaw Said I'm here to stay, that's for every win That's for every loss I can never estimate price you pay To forget my faults. I said baby girl, you don't have to take this She said boy, you gonna have to face it I wanna hold you close I'll never let you go Come let me in your arms I wanna hold you close How do people get like me? You ain't never seen a wreck like me You ain't never owed a debt like me How you gonna save a wretch like me? I might turn a bottle to a hospital Saw somebody carve a canyon And their skin's on the real Grande Turn red, they might need a bandage Need a friend, I feel so abandoned But I know I deserve it 
I don't even wanna fight the verdict. I don't need some kind of words I have heard. Everyone I know, I'm the worst. And flying birds really kind of covet. Scared to go, cause I don't know what's next. When I die, will I fly? Will I love it? Will I pay the price for rejecting everything you gave? How much does your grace cost when I face off with my past and I lose the game? Build a sand castle out of fear. And now I pray that you'll send a wave. Will you renovate? Will you terminate? If you're even there, you just probably hate me. Grab me by my hand and I felt the spirit move in my heart. Said I'll live again and that all I did is nail to the cross I could never estimate price you paid to forgive my fault then I said Lord I cannot repay this He said boy you gonna have to face it I wanna it. hold you close hold I'll never you. let you go never Come let, let me go. in your arms I wanna hold you close I wanna hold I'll never let you go Come let me in your arms I wanna hold you close What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we got, got a treat for the Stewie. Uh, I'm taking it, to, taking it to get detailed. A uh, guy in my hometown. And um... You know, a lot of the paint work hopefully comes out good. Uh, I wet sand it to the best of my ability. I don't know, maybe could have done a little bit more, but i just rather not take off all the layers of clear coat um, and then have nothing left. So we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, currently on the highway. So I'll uh, holler at you guys back out when we get to uh, the detail shop. I'm here at Dan's Detailing. Got the CUB parked in the garage. This is a home garage DIY kind of setup here. So basically every chemical you can imagine is on this rack. He's got a sick tripod setup. Our Dan D'Augusto here at Dan's Detail. He runs his own shop. Tell us what you're gonna do today, Dan. Um, so for the video, we're gonna start off by getting rid of this paste up, sand up bumper we got here. This is a rotary polisher. We'll go down to 600. Um, this is a finishing or polishing pad, depending on what kind of paint you're working with. We have it on a 15 millimeter throw dual action polisher. Let's see what happens. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to go from here to here, but I have a product that has diminishing abrasives in it. So we could take this thing from cut to polish pretty heavily and uh, hopefully skip a step. This right. product came out maybe like two years ago. This is the last cut. This guy uh, makes this in his garage out in like Arizona and it's like the best performing product I've ever used. Usually if I'm ceramic coating or OptiCoating a car, I'm gonna finish it off with this product recommended by OptiCoat to put on the car like as a primer. Uh, got a few in here. This is probably what we're gonna end up putting on this car. G-Tech crystal sanding light. G-Technique, ooh. Top it off with EXO is recommended. I've heard you get five years out of this coating, so we're gonna see what happens. I recommend that customer wash their car once a week, if not every other week. Top it off with a spray ceramic. It's not needed, but it would definitely help boost the longevity of the coating. When you prep a car, you're gonna wanna um, clay bar it, and you're gonna wanna polish the car. If you put this on your car and you maintain it properly, you shouldn't get any contamination on your paint where you're going to need to clay bar the car. As long as you're using the proper chemicals, maybe hit it with some iron remover once a year, just strip it a little bit, you're not going to need to reapply a base coat sealant on your paint. You can just keep topping it off with spray waxes or spray ceramic products that have come out. So Damage, got Dan checking it out, inspecting how crappy of a job I did. What's the worst that can happen? You just respray it if we burn through or do whatever. Looks like you did a pretty good job, but once we buff it, we'll be able to see more of like how bad it is. Basically the top down from the headlight to the bottom, I probably could have avoided doing such a large area, um, but this was like the first trial I did and I just went big for some stupid reason. Uh, then I worked my way down to just the bottom lip. Um, got a front lip coming, stay tuned. Um, but I went all the way around to the very edge because for some reason these stupid front bumpers just get chewed up with a bunch of road rash. 
Um, nothing on the top end. If we work our way to the back, we have this rear fender. Uh, this guy was dented and rusted and I, uh, I banged it out as much as I could. There's a before and after. I'll show you guys these photos right now. So what I did was, after I banged it out, I added a bunch of uh, Bondo to try and make it as flat of a surface. It's kind of like rounded, but you can't really tell. And then, you know, base coat, I mean primer, base coat, clear coat. This corner was also scratched up because whatever he hit or got hit. And then I wet sanded. And you know, like the front, you could still see the orange peel because uh, I just didn't want to burn through all the clear coat. And you know, I might have have actually. So we'll find out, but that's that part. Got this little corner right next to the diffuser. It's not terrible. Uh, this very center part of the back bumper. Uh, I had like two dents. Uh, yeah, two dents, I'd say like one deep scratch that just really bothered me and I didn't know how to do like three individual spots. So I just decided to do like one whole section, but it's probably gonna make it no more noticeable. So RIP to that. And then the last spot is just this corner area. For some reason, this guy just really didn't like his back corners and you know, trying to make up for a bad owner and take care of her, but we'll see how she comes out. If all else fails, I'll just pay 10 grand for a whole new paint job. All right, so Dan's about to begin the buffing stage, no, polishing stage. Dan's about to begin the compounding stage. I'm gonna get this pad as saturated as possible with compound mm -hmm. so every hair works product. So you want to get rid of that. A lot of people like to use a brush. I just pour. Eventually, you're gonna clean it. So after the first pass of just the compounding stage, this is the aftermath. Pretty solid results, so if I take you to an area, like this real matte looking haze, this is what it was before. And this is where I spent some decent time. Reflections coming through. Make sure you have a good light. Uh, yeah, you can definitely see some uh, peaks and valleys of the orange peel still, but you know, that's just poor job of wet sanding. Uh, but nothing you can do there, I'd rather have some, some glossiness too, some clear coat left. You can see a bunch of swirl marks. all the way through the panel. So we're gonna get a look at if Dan can get some of these swirl marks out. Got it all over the car. So Dan is using a, this, still the dual action, but he's putting a microfiber pad. Microfiber cutting pad. This is caused from improper washing, car washes, dirty rags, even if you're hand washing.
this area that he worked on. Now using the same way, you can't really see too many of the micro scratches. But when you work your way down to the area that wasn't touched, then you start seeing more of the swirl marks. Yeah. This paint glitters, man. That is dance detailing two stage. What is it? Two step, That's single step, polish, cycled out twice using a diminishing eraser. And if you look on the part that wasn't polished, a little dirty. Leg down, you're gonna notice there is still a little bit of marring left over from that pad. But honestly, I think it's something that might be unnoticeable to the human eye without sunlight, but we still do have a little bit of marring. It can still be finished further. All right, so what are you gonna do here, Dan? Um, we're going to remove this haze that you've created with the sandpaper with the same pad. It's a wool finishing pad by Rupes, and this is a 15 millimeter throw dual action polisher. And this pad is very versatile, and the scream is very versatile. You can use them on either a rotary or a DA. Using a DA is gonna give us a much higher finish, and typically gives you a little better cut depending on what you're doing. So we're just gonna get after this. I like to spread it out so you're not all over the place. And we're gonna work slow and let the cream and the machine do the work. The more you're moving around, the more you're gonna diminish this polish. So we're just gonna start up and Quick job, you can use an acidic cleaner. If you want to really extend the life of your pad as much as possible, you can use a pH balance cleaner. This is Shine Supply Solution. Um, basically the best multi-purpose cleaner you could ever get for your car. If you care about your car, don't put acid on it. If you work in a shop, you can't do that all the time. You need acid, you need it to work with your pHs properly. But I'm gonna show you a safe version so we can maintain the life of this pad. We're gonna douse it in soap. And we're gonna have a dried up compound stuck in the fibers of this. So I'm gonna take a pretty stiff bristle brush. I'm gonna work that compound out of here. I'm gonna make a mess, I'm gonna get all over myself. Typically you can leave this in a bucket of solution Maybe like an ounce of all-purpose cleaner in a bucket, leave it for a couple hours, but we're just gonna rinse this out right away. You see all the compound coming out.